So I've been involved in finance for about a decade. I got started right at the bottom of the 2008 financial crisis. And so it's been an exciting time. When I first got started, I was known as a uh, kind of a marketing guru and people would hire me to optimize their web business, go in there and analyze all the little pieces of their uh, setup and find little tweaks to help improve their performance. And I ran into a guy who had made a ton of money shorting the stock market in 08. So he flew out to our office and was showing me his Ameritrade account, you know, these 20 cent QQQ puts had gone up to uh, something like 20 bucks. And so I, I was very interested, but at the time I, I had no clue what was really uh, up and down from uh, heads or tails in the finance world. Uh, so we started selling his program. And unfortunately, this guy really only bet one direction. He was a perma bear, thought America was coming to an end. And uh, if we'd actually done the exact opposite of his alerts, uh, people would have walked away really handsomely, including myself. I think my first trade was a 100% loser on a put option with about a <laughs> grand at stake. So I can certainly relate to people who've uh, had a hard time making money in the stock market. Uh, so pretty quickly, I realized this guy had just gotten lucky and uh, really had a pretty closed mind about what would happen in the future. And so I was interested in the space and started hiring up uh, more credible gurus. And so I've worked with most of the famous people you'll see in the stock advisory world. Uh, we represented from a company called Market Authority for about, about a good eight year run. And it was a really interesting uh, period of my life. We were managing something like 12 different gurus, and uh, all of them had their own unique twist about how they wanted to invest. They had their own style, they had their own niche, they had their own way they went about presenting the content and issuing the trade parts. And it was, you know, it was a big bull market, so most of them, as long as they bet up, did pretty well. Uh, but I found some big, problems, a big disconnect between the people following the trade alerts and these, these you know, very expertise trading gurus. And what I found was that most people were not getting the result of the guru. And whether you want to blame it on the guru or the guy following it, at the end of the day, there was a big problem with people being able to accurately receive the trade alert, understand how much of their money should go into that trade, and then be able to actually execute that trade. And so I think what you'll see in this program is that we've attempted to solve that big dilemma and make it extremely easy to follow. The next big mistake I found uh, was that in general, the people who are buying this sort of product tended to be folks who had saved up a considerable amount of money, but they were going into retirement and they're really entering a phase of their life where safety and precaution should be the number one priority. Uh, but, you know, all these gurus trying to compete with one another, well, they thought the exact opposite. They thought they really needed to outperform the stock market uh, and all their other peers to be able to attract clientele. And so, uh, long story short, it's extremely hard to beat the market for a very considerable uh, period of time. And some people can do it, but usually no one else can replicate what they're, what they're doing. And so whether it's the trade alerts come out at an unpredictable time, uh, it's not clear how much to invest, the prices are moving too quickly to get anywhere near the same price, uh, you know, you've been through it. There's a million tricks and gimmicks people use who go about inflating their returns. And at the end of the day, you know, what we really want to do is just make a safe, consistent profit and, uh, and really not risk losing a lot of money. So with that said, uh, you know, so someone in here said he's been following me for several years. You know, I fell into the same trap uh, with creating products that were aggressive. They did great. They did really well. They had big returns. But the, the more I dived into this and really understood who's following our program, 
and what they really need, maybe not what they want, but what they really need, uh, that's what this program does. So I'm gonna give you guys a little overview of our various portfolios, how we recommend allocating your capital. You're gonna see it's super simple. You're gonna see the trade alerts are very predictable, very repetitive. Uh, you know, you probably could figure out what we're doing and go do this on your own after you hop off this webinar. Uh, but most people do appreciate uh, the nuances we bring to the table and making it pretty easy for you to follow along and get the exact same results. So we've uh, slowly built over the last year. Let me mute everybody. I think we're getting some kind of uh, some bad feedback uh, from the audio. Let me. Okay, so <clears throat> we've built quite a gathering and it's primarily people with portfolios. Uh, the, the least you can follow our programs with is usually around $30,000, but I'd say the average client following us has somewhere between a quarter million and $3 million. And pretty quickly they realize what we're doing is extremely conservative, it's very long-term, it's very consistent, and at the end of the day, we're just trying to generate a safe, consistent 1% return a month. And so uh, with that said, before I go into an overview of all the various portfolios, I'd like to start off with uh, Chris giving you his account for what he's experienced so far in the program. Then I'll let Dean talk a little bit about his experience and we'll go from there. Uh, Chris, I think we got your audio live now. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I've been a trader in the market for over 40 years, uh, trading stocks and bonds and options and all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> and I've done pretty well a lot of the time when the market's going up and I've done not so well uh, the other times when the market's going down. So turns out that uh, I pretty much have mirrored what the market's been doing, even though sometimes I think I'm a genius and then other times I'm pretty sure I'm not. And so as I retired, I've been retired for about two years, I started thinking that I really needed to get more of a defensive, something where I would keep from losing money that I spent my whole life gaining rather than trying to hit, you know, the ball out of the park. It's exciting to try to hit the ball out of the park and every once in a while you do it. And then of course that confirms how, you know, great of a stock picker you are. But when you look at the greens versus the reds, you know, I ended up with a lot more reds than greens. And um, so I came across the portfolio builder and decided that I'd do the free trial, which I ignored for probably the first six days and then begged for another week because I finally decided I wanted to start paying attention. And I did, and then I started trading the program and bought the program. And, you know, I had some pretty good days, you know, not a tremendous amount. I had put 30 grand in um, Robin Hood, <clears throat> but you know, almost every day was green and you know, I'd make anywhere from, you know, 50 bucks to 300 bucks on a good day. But some of those days in my regular trading stuff with Schwab, I'm down like five grand. And of course, you know, that just tends to irritate you. So I started escalating the amount of money I was putting into the, uh, the portfolio builders thing by, joining the Diamond Club, which trades mostly covered calls on Apple now. And I started going from kind of small days to bigger and bigger days. And so I committed more and more money to it. I've been doing it for about two and a half months now. I'm up pretty well, uh, more actually than, you know, we say we're shooting for. And it's just easy to do. It takes like three minutes a day. And when I wake up in the morning, I'm not anxious about my portfolio. I keep moving up, up, up. It's not at a 45 degree angle. It's more like 10 degree angle, but it's continually going on the upside. And I don't fear that I'm gonna lose my nest egg. So when I think about this program and I talk to people, I really think, why wouldn't you do this? And I strongly urge you to get involved with it, not just on a trial basis, but to sign up because you're gonna be happy and you're not gonna have anxiety. And, you know, you're not going to get super rich off this thing or anything, but you're going to protect yourself and make money. And that's pretty much it. 
Very good summary. Let me uh, let me let Dean say a piece now. Thank you, uh, thank you, Chris and Jason. Chris, a uh, quick question: uh, How long did it take you to make back your membership um, on on the two programs? Well, okay, I, I'm going to tell you the answer, but we sort of had a, a, a I, I kind of had a blip in the third week of trading the diamond program. So, you know, I pretty much made my money back with the, uh, on the basic, you know, in the first couple of weeks. And then I got into the diamond program, which didn't cost me anything at the time because I was getting a 30 day free trial on it. And like my fourth and fifth weeks, I had weeks where I made 4,000 and $5,000 consecutively. Um, since then, I haven't made that much. You know, it's been like, you know, 1200 bucks and stuff. So I don't want to oversell this thing. But luckily for me, I ended up paying for everything like my first month. And so I was able to, you know, invest in the diamond program based on what I had made already from the free trial. So I kind of lucked out and I wouldn't say that's going to happen for everybody for sure, but it did for me. Okay. Thank you, Chris. I, I appreciate the, the color there. Okay, uh, team, my name is Dean Gallagher. Uh, I've been working with uh, Jason um, for the past 11 years or so. Uh, we, we met in college. Uh, we were always talking about investments, and I think I kind of put the initial bug in, in Jason, so I apologize, Jason. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, we were, we were always talking about investments uh, instead of, you know, partying with our friends. And uh, anyways, we kind of became friends, and and uh, helped uh, launch the, the last company from its inception to, you know, uh, a staff of 50 people and, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of customers everywhere. And, uh, you know, when we, when we first started the company, I had this uh, really cool kind of family type connection uh, to our customers. And, you know, af after we got over five, 6,000 customers, you kind of you lose some of that, that connection and some of that family bond. And uh, so that's, you know, that's, that's what we're doing here is, uh, you know, we're, we're keeping it small. We're keeping the company uh, extremely lean um, and, and really are creating a, a fantastic network of, uh, of individuals uh, all over the United States, all over the world uh, um, that, are, that are following the system. And what I've really found uh, from, from the past few months of following this and interacting with our customers that uh, the general philosophy and psychology of the people we're helping, it, it really kind of takes everyone from being a, an aggressive type of personality uh, to, to more of a defensive uh, personality and understanding in the market. And um, I, I did something very similar um, about 10 years ago with my trading. I went from trying to hit the ball out of the park every single at bat uh, made a ton of money and then lost uh, a lot. And it was the most painful experience of my life. Uh, and it really taught me to be a lot more defensive with my trading. And since I've figured that out, life has been much better. Um, and I, I actually owned Shares of the Spy before uh, Jason came up with this program. And I said, oh, man, if there's a safer way to own the least stressful investment I've ever had, Oh my God, this is going to be even better. And uh, it's been nothing but that for me. Um, the ability to sleep at night uh, with, I have about 50% of my portfolio in the, in the spy trades has just been phenomenal. I don't care what happens overnight. Um, volatility is good. Uh, and when you develop a defensive mindset and, uh, you know, kind of psychology that, that you look at investments with, um, uh, the better off life is. My stress level has, you know, decreased. The amount of sleep I'm getting is has skyrocketed, and uh, you know, even if we're only doing, you know, 15% a year, you're doubling money every six years, and I'm perfectly happy with that. Uh, and you know, we're we're trying to do 1% a month. We're getting more than that, but we're not going to tell you that. We'll let you do it yourself. And uh, oh, another thing too, folks, um, if you haven't called me to reduce your brokerage costs, uh, please feel free to do so. I've literally saved every person I've talked to thousands of dollars 
uh, over, you know, years, lifetimes, whatever, however you want to look at it. Uh, but I'll probably be able to save you the cost of the membership from a 15 minute phone call if you need to. Thank you, Dean. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and uh, do a quick overview and then we'll open it up to Q and A with, with all you guys out there. So, uh, so that's a good point. Our strategy is very intensive in terms of uh, if you can save money on commissions, it will definitely impact the bottom line. And luckily there's some really good brokers out there. Plus your current broker, if you just threaten to go to interactive brokers or, you know, say the word Robin hood, they'll probably shake in their boots. Uh, we've been able to get almost everybody to stay where they're at with their capital and get those commission costs dropped significantly. Um, but yeah, let me just do a quick overview of, of what we teach, how it works. We'll look at some of the most recent trade alerts so we can go through the mechanics and then I'll open up uh, everything for Q and A. We can chat and go over it all in detail. So the first thing we had to do is make the trade alerts predictable. If you don't know when the trade's gonna come, it's not something that will be very useful to your, uh, to your life. And so the first thing we've done is design specific trade days and times. So every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, our first core product trades the SPY ETF. So the SPY is the single biggest fund in the world, bigger than Ray Dalio's private equity fund. It's an ETF, and it automatically diversifies your capital into the top 504 companies. What's more unique about the SPY beyond it being the top traded security in the world, probably the most important security in the world. It has three option expirations a week. And so that becomes very useful because we can sell call options to what I would call stock gamblers, and then we can take profits from that. So even if the market goes flat, we can still generate income from selling call options. Now there will be periods of time where we think the SPY is gonna go up significantly. And this happens to be a period of time where I do think that. So we slightly alter the strike prices to try to maximize your return uh, from the SPY. So it's, it's a very useful tool to have three option expirations a week on the SPY. There's no other security in the world that offers that. And so we can essentially sell a call option against the SPY three times a week to generate income for the rest of your life. Now, <clears throat> in order to make these trades what I call atomic bomb proof, we're also buying a put option with a part of the credit we collect. So we're basically financing a put option by selling a call option. And the, the end result is that when the market flies higher, we may make less than everyone else. But on the flip side, when the market goes down, we lose much less and it's cut off at a certain point. So I'll, I'll pull up a trade alert right now so we can see how that works. So let's look at the last two trades following the SPY. So this is the template of how your trade alert will look. And this, the first step is going to always be to close out the previous week's trade. Now, the first time you get into this, you're not gonna have a, it's called an option caller, you're not gonna have the options to close. So you can skip to step two the first time you take a trade alert. Uh, but the typical format, if we think the market's going flat or higher, is to sell a call option above the trading price and to buy a put option below the trading price. Okay, so this is the profit loss graph uh, that we include with every trade alert. So you really have a clear idea of what's the best case scenario, what's the worst case scenario of this trade. So we can see with this caller trade, our maximum loss, the SPY could drop $10 overnight, $20 overnight, people would be losing $1,000, $2,000 per block of 100 shares of SPY. 
You will not because we always buy a put option. And that put option gives us the right to sell our shares at that strike price. So no matter how far the SPY drops in any trading period, our loss gets cut off at that strike price of the put. So you can see in this sample trade, we're trying to generate a profit of up to $170, and we're taking on a maximum risk of $230. Okay, so let's take a look at how this is actually traded. So step one is we have to have 100 shares of the SPY. Step two, we're going to sell to open a call. So this means we're short the call option. That's how we can generate income in a flat market. That's how we can reduce losses in a down market. And if the stock flies higher, we still win. So let's just look at how that works out. So if I sell to open a 299 call, what does that exactly mean? Well, let's take a look. So when we entered this trade, you can see the SPY was trading at the last trading price of 297.29. And in this trade alert, I am agreeing to sell my shares of SPY for $299 if what I would call a stock speculator is willing to pay me 34 cents a share up front. And uh, in this example, I, I'm pretty confident that the SPY did go up, so we ended up making the maximum profit. But let's just talk out loud. Let's say the SPY were to skyrocket to $310 that same day. What would happen? Well, what would most likely happen is we would be assigned. The call option buyer would exercise his right to buy our shares for $299. We would get to keep the 34 cents a share and he's gonna make the difference on how much the value of the SPY went up. So he's trying to quite frankly get a 50%, 100%, 200% gain. And on our side, we're just trying to pick up his 34 cents and pick up the difference in the last trading price in the strike. So if we look at this, the last trading price was 297.29. And we're agreeing to sell our shares at 299. So that is a dollar 71 higher. So we're making a dollar 71 profit plus we get to keep that 34 cents that he paid us for this option. Now what's going to happen to the put option we bought? That's our insurance. Well, if the spy goes up, the value of the put option is going down. And so you'll see, and this is actually a common complaint. Uh, is that people hate to watch their put options go to zero every week. But that's really fine with us because we don't buy insurance to make money every day. We buy insurance so when things go wrong, we're not shit out of luck. Think about the hospital. Can you imagine having to have a ma major surgery and you're too cheap to buy insurance? It'd be a disaster. And so it's, it's quite scary how many people just let their entire portfolio float in the stock market that's extremely leveraged with absolutely no downside protection. Uh, so this little trade is very simple. We let the call option that we've sold finance our put option. So it's really free to us. Now are we giving up some of the upside potential profit? Yeah. But on the other hand, if the market goes flat, we just make the profit from that call option. So let's take a look at how this trade alert played out. So this was on 7.22. Here was the next trade alert. So this came out on Wednesday. Now notice we didn't sell our put option. That's because it was only worth a penny. It went to a value of zero and we couldn't even sell it. But that's completely fine. Now at the bottom of every email, I summarize what's happened. And so you can see the SPY jumped up after we did that trade. So let's look at how it all panned out. So the SPY ETF from Monday to Wednesday traveled higher. It went from 297.29 up to $300 even. 
for a profit of $2.71 or $2 per share. Now, if you have 100 shares of SPY, of course, that's a $271 profit. Okay, now I also want everybody to do this in their head. If we can have three income opportunities a week, and we can have 52 weeks in a trading year, how many income opportunities do we have? 156. Now, if we're making $100 per income opportunity, that's $15,600 of income just from doing this simple strategy. Now, we're not trying to, to get that type of return. That's a 50% annualized return. And we don't win 100% of the time. So I don't wanna mislead anyone into thinking we're gonna help you get a 50% return a year. But when you realize how profitable it can be to pick up these dollars per share consistently, or even just 50 cents or 25 cents on average, and do it over and over and over again, it's extremely lucrative. And the best analogy I can come up with, it's not, it's not exactly like this, but if you think about using Airbnb to rent out a property, that's kind of what this is like. We're selling call options, kind of like renting out your house, but we're also profiting from the house slowly going up in value as well. And so this is the format of how our trade alerts look every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And it's not gonna change. Now I'll show you guys in a little bit, uh, a popular question is, well, does this work in a long-term bear market? So I'll, I'll come back to that question. But what you're gonna see is we can take this exact same model and make one tiny, tiny switch to how this is set up. And we get the same deal, but betting down. So we can certainly use this strategy to profit from a long-term bear market. And I'll also go over what would make me think we were entering into a bear market. So that's just a quick summary of how it works. Step one is going to always be, and we also send out a text message with this. A lot of our clients uh, do like to travel a lot and they're using the Robinhood app on their phone. So all of a sudden now they can travel, get the text message, punch in the trade. They know when it's coming, noon Eastern, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and that's it. It's a very simple, repetitive, predictable strategy that works very well. And the, the reason this works so well is because the underlying asset is so strong. And I think that's the biggest mistake most people make is they end up buying risky securities. They don't really realize uh, you know, that Netflix or Nvidia or even something like AT&T are really small companies compared to some of the giants like Amazon and Apple and Google and Facebook so by owning the SPY ETF, we have a very diversified portfolio. And this certain ETF has actually put out of business a tremendous amount of hedge funds in 2018. In fact, a lot of people think that crash in the Christmas, uh, what they call the Christmas massacre, was a lot of hedge funds going out of business and having to liquidate. And the problem is they can't outperform the SPY to save their lives. In fact, Warren Buffett is famous for uh, going on the record, I think a decade ago, betting all the hedge fund managers out there that they couldn't outperform the SPY. Uh, so, so the SPY is the key to this strategy. And without the SPY, this would not be such a great strategy. It's because we trust that the S&P 500 will be a very stable, long-term investment that this works so well. Okay, so that is a review of the format of our SPY trade. It's called a caller option trade. It's very repetitive. We take a look at the option market to help pick the strikes. So quick review of this for anyone who's not familiar. My core interest in the option market uh, when I'm analyzing the option chain is where is Wall Street putting their money? And so on the call option side, we can see in this particular trade, the open interest is at 303. So that means Wall Street is ready to sell their shares at 303. So that's typically where I'll go sell our call option. 
On the other side, I want to know where is Wall Street willing to buy the S&P 500? And so in this case, you can see the biggest open interest at 297. So that's typically where, right around where we'll buy our put option. And so in every trading period, we have a maximum loss that's set and defined. It's not unlimited. And on the other side, we have a maximum profit. So it's kind of like we've taken the best asset in the world and we're actually taming it down a little bit for you. So we're gonna make any down moves much less painful but we're gonna give up a little bit of the upside. And so the end result is a very smooth, consistent profit that slowly grows. Now the SPY is just one part of our program. Let me take a look at our alternative to the SPY. This portfolio has certainly outperformed the SPY and it only trades on Tuesdays once a week at noon Eastern. Now, there's no free lunch. Everybody knows there's no free lunch in the stock market. And I can tell you the setup for how we trade this is identical to the SPY trade. So it's exactly the same. How does it outperform? Well, we're choosing individual stocks or a basket of stocks and doing the same strategy, but only on a weekly basis. And again, none of these securities offer three options a week. So we couldn't do the SPY setup uh, in terms of the frequency, even if we wanted to. So most of the year, especially after we had that huge sell-off in December, we were actually using a basket of stocks, which represent the top holdings in the SPY ETF. So there's no magic to how we pick these. These are the biggest positions in the SPY and the QQQ ETF. So that's good to know that the SPY has the most money flowing into it every day of all equities, and that capital automatically flows straight into these companies for the most part. So we know these companies have a huge demand. They have the best credit ratings, they have the biggest corporate buybacks, and because of them having individual volatility, there's different option pricing on each of these stocks. So at the end of the day, we can get a lot more yield from selling call options on a specific stock versus a basket ETF like the SPY. And so at the end of the day, it is a riskier strategy. It can have bigger swings and it does. It has had bigger swings to the downside than the SPY, but it also has bigger swings to the upside. And so this portfolio has nearly performed at 2% a month instead of 1% like the SPY. Uh, the current setup on this though, after we got back towards the all-time highs, was to go solidify the portfolio into a single stock. And so the choice was Apple. Let's talk about why Apple. Well, first of all, Microsoft would have been a good pick, but it actually has less volatility than the SPY. So you can actually make less money selling call options against Microsoft than you can against the SPY. So Microsoft may be a great buy and hold company. It's not very lucrative for selling call options. Apple, on the other hand, is. Got a quick question from John. Is the Tuesday service a different cost or subscribers? Uh, no, John, we we do have a light product where you can just get the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but we also have a, just a general program where you get everything. And I'm, I'm about to show you another portfolio that ties this all together, which I say bulletproofs your, your profits and especially protects your risk in being all in in equities. Uh, so we need to have a big allocation to the bond market to really be safe and really achieve what we're trying to do here, which is, make it extremely hard to lose. That's really the goal of this program, much less so than trying to generate profits at all costs. I question how can we reduce our potential risk? And so I'll get into that in a minute so you can see how it all ties together, but I certainly don't recommend anyone listening to this be 100% in equities. That's crazy, uh, especially if you're going into a period of your life where you really need to preserve capital and just try to make a consistent income. 
Uh, so the Tuesday trade is currently all in an Apple. Why do we like Apple at this point in time? Well, first of all, it's not back to its all-time high. It'll have to get to 230. During the US-China escalation, it took a serious, serious sell-off. So it's actually selling at a discount. And because of that volatility, option prices on Apple are very expensive, which means it's very lucrative to hold the stock and sell those call options. What else is good about Apple? Well, the US government stabbed one of its key competitors in the back, Huawei, so that's bullish. Uh, it's the top holding in Berkshire Hathaway by far. So we've got Warren Buffett's whole crowd following Apple. It has a trillion dollars, so it can buy back its own stock. Uh, it's really just a great company in the long run. So I really like Apple right now at this point in time. Now that doesn't mean we may not change the specific stock or basket of stocks, but those are the core reasons. It's the top position in the SPY. It is one of the leaders in corporate buybacks. And one of its biggest competitors was just literally stabbed in the back. So its outlook is looking very good. Uh, so that's the SPY trade. And for those of you who want a little more risk in your equities portion of your portfolio, but you still want that absolute downside protection, the Tuesday trade makes a lot of sense. Now what I want to do is go to the next two parts of our strategy. So currently we're recommending a very, very safe setup, 45% following equities, whether you want to do the Tuesday trade, or the Monday, Wednesday, Friday trade, it's up to you. Some of our followers do all the trades. They really enjoy uh, doing the trades. It's always at noon Eastern, so you know when to show up and be ready. Uh, but this portfolio is really critical. So this is the US Treasury 20 plus year ETF fund. And so the TLT has been going up all year. It's been a very simple and easy strategy to follow. Same idea, and I'll pull up the trade alerts for, for these two services. Uh, but the general idea is that usually if the bond market's pulling back, equities market is pulling ahead. Equities market pulls back, bond market pulls ahead. And so when you balance your portfolio in a one-to-one -one ratio of bonds to stocks, you throw in the call option selling to generate consistent income against the asset, and then you take part of your call option income and buy a put option, you, you're so protected. Just from the underlying assets, even without the put options, those two do such a good job of balancing one another out. Throw in the put option, now it's impossible to have a bad day. That's just absolutely impossible because we have a set loss on our underlying asset at all times because we always have a put option below. Uh, so I'll pull up the, the most recent trade alerts for these two programs in a, in a minute. The last piece of the puzzle is our gold, silver, and cryptocurrency basket. Now, if you remember back in December, the Fed was promising we had a full year of uh, rate hikes, which would be very bearish for all of these assets. But what did the stock market do? It crashed and the Fed immediately capitulated. They've gone from raising rates on autopilot to now we're expecting the Fed to lower rates this Tuesday and start hinting at the next round of quantitative easing. So that's why we've been slowly but surely raising our recommendation for how much capital should be in these anti-inflationary investments. So precious metals and cryptocurrencies. This portfolio is up considerably. It started off at only two and a half percent recommendation when we first got started in December. And as we've seen the Fed uh, quite remarkably reverse course in everything they promised us, uh, we've become more and more bullish. Now, because of the growth of the, this part of our portfolio, we haven't had to add a whole lot of capital to hit our target uh, percentage. But right now, my recommendation is 10% of your portfolio should be in a basket of investments that are something like this. So could be as simple as just holding the GLD ETF, but if you want a little extra spice, 
we have a very nice basket of, of stocks and ETFs and cryptocurrencies that will help you achieve that. So GLD is great. It's the spot on gold. This will probably be the most consistent money maker in, in what we're expecting. Uh, but if you want to really potentially get a bigger return, GDX and SIL are the minor companies. So we need a long-term demand for gold and silver for those to really take off, but they have a lot more room to go up uh, than something like spot gold does, which could potentially have a ceiling on it just because the central banks are buying up gold at record pace right now. Uh, and then we have a big position in Bitcoin and much smaller positions in those altcoins. So this is a good way to add some extra risk to your portfolio in a simple buy and hold manner and helps us profit from the Fed potentially going into the next round of QE, which is quite remarkable because uh, if we go look at what's going on around the world, in America it looks great. Equities are going up, bond prices are going up, but what's really happening? Well, the rest of the world's going through a global slowdown. PMIs are crashing. Uh, yields around the world are going into negative territory. There's $13 trillion of negative debt. None of that really makes sense. If everything's so great, why is the rest of the world suffering so poorly right now? And so the big fear uh, is that this is going to catch up to America, that everybody's fleeing out of their own country's investments to buy up American assets as the last safe place to invest. And what we're looking at right here is the effective federal funds rate. And what I want to point out, and this should be quite scary to everyone, is that to, to pr get out of the last two recessions, the Fed had to drop rates in the 08 crash from 5% to zero and print a ton of money over the last 10 years. Oh, shoot. Let me get back to that. Okay, so it took five basis points to get out of the last crash. The, the dot-com bubble, they went from six and a half down to one and a quarter. So another 5% drop. Go back to this period and it went from 9.8 down to 3.3. So tell me, if we go into a recession now, because China's economy is crashing and it's causing uh, places like Germany to go into negative yielding bonds. Their PMI is uh, way below 50. How are we going to get out of a recession when it does catch up to America when we're sitting at two and a quarter? So the big prediction here is if and when a recession starts to unfold in America, they're going to have to push the, the yield for the first time into negative territory and pr print a tremendous amount of capital. And so the Fed knows this, and that's why uh, the bond market is predicting that they're gonna lower rates this Tuesday and start to hint at doing QE before a recession starts. They know they don't have the ammo to, uh, to fight this if they wait for it to happen. So it does look like they're going to try to prevent it from happening with some very dovish moves. And so this is a great reason uh, to have gold in your portfolio right now. Okay, I got a question from John. Okay, so he says, so you're saying that 10% of the portfolio should go into the precious metals cryptocurrency portfolio, and you would divide the 10% into those stocks. Yeah, so, uh, and also, you guys also get a copy of the spreadsheet. Not everybody likes spreadsheets, but it does come in handy. Um, but on Monday and Tuesday evenings is when I really focus on what to do with the precious metals portfolio. And I spell out exactly how much capital you're putting into this portfolio, how you would break it down. And so I give you increments if you're investing $1,000, $2,500, $5,000, $10,000. So you can easily figure this out. And this is going to most likely be, at a minimum, a one to three year period of time where the Fed is trying to fight off a recession uh, and will be very dovish. So this is not 
some sort of crazy swing trading thing. This is really a very simple buy this, hold it until things change. So I'll get into kind of some of the key things I'm focusing on to predict the general macro moves. Uh, but right now, the US government is creating such tremendous levels of debt. And so far, it's been the primary brokers buying all this, but they're running out of cash to do so. And meanwhile, the dollar, let's look at the dollar. The dollar is so strong. Uh, okay, Richard wants to know, why is this bullish for gold? Okay, so yeah, so well, we'll take a look. I'll take a look at that in a second. So the big problem that America faces right now is we're creating tremendous amounts of deficit. Our government is so hungry for, for money. And meanwhile, because the rest of the world's suffering so much right now, the dollar continues to climb higher and higher. So that means it's very risky for foreign investors to buy U.S. Treasury bonds because when they do cash out, they want to convert back into their local currency. So if their local currency is losing value at a rate faster than the yield, uh, they're not going to buy the bonds. It's just that simple. So this is a big problem. If the Fed lowers rates, it should help soften the value of the dollar, attract foreign capital, and ensure that the U.S. government's funded. So that's, that's really what we're expecting. Um, so most likely 25 basis point cut uh, coming up Tuesday. Now, if it's a big surprise, maybe 50 basis points. So if the Fed is lowering rates to zero, that means banks can borrow money for free and go make speculative bets. And if they begin to increase the monetary supply, that creates inflation. So let's take a look at inflation. That's uh, something that's critical for everyone to understand. Okay, so you got to ask yourself, why in the hell did America raise the effective federal funds rate up to 18%? There's a huge period of time where we had very high rates. Well, it was because of inflation. Okay, so the big fear, and this is what will cause gold to go up, is if the Fed goes to zero, prints a ton of money, that tends to cause inflation. And so if we go look at this period of time, what do we got right here? We have huge inflation prints. So in the 60s, it was nice and low, con consistently low. And then all of a sudden we had runaway inflation. Fed had to raise rates. And so that's when we entered a long-term bear market. So the last two bear markets were just a, a year and a year and a half. Those are nothing. You could live through that and watch your assets come back up in value. But what people like Ray Dalio are predicting is that we're in the last inning, the last two innings of this bull market before we're going to have to start working down this debt. So America is now at 100% uh, GDP to debt level. And at some point, they cannot have that level of debt. They're going to have to start, we're going to have to start paying it off. And so that's where you get a, just a completely destructive period of time if you're just buy and hold. So if you're buy and hold, we're entering a period, something like the 1960s where we were in a cold war with Russia, you know, look at China, that's probably what we're gonna be fighting against for quite some time. Uh, you have to have a strategy that protects you to the downside. Could you imagine? If you invested in 1965, you thought you're in this unstoppable bull market, and then what happened next? You lost 75% of your portfolio over a period of 15 years, and then you had to wait another 10 years for it to get back to even. So people going into retirement really can't afford to have a strategy that's buy and hold, and you just hope the market goes up forever. So, so that's the general outlook. Uh, it's, my thought is that the Fed is not going 
to let the, uh, the rates go up until there's runaway inflation. In fact, they're saying they want the inflation to, uh, to go above 2% uh, for quite some time before they'll even consider raising rates. And so in general, what we're expecting is the Fed is going to lower interest rates, start buying up US debt, probably at around $100 billion a month. That makes up for that trillion dollar deficit. And they're gonna put a fix on the, uh, on the yield on the TLT. So from our point of view, that's fine. We'd like to own the treasury bonds with 45% of our portfolio. We'll sell the call option to the guys who wanna bet just how far down the yields will go. And then if they really do start to push these, yield, uh, these rates so low, that means banks can borrow money for free and start betting on very speculative investments. And so that's, that's kind of the general outlook of how we go about allocating our capital. Let's take a look at some of the sample trade alerts in the other programs so you can see how it all fits together. And then I'll open this up for Q&A. Excellent explanation, Jason. Thank you. All right, here's a sample Apple trade or Tuesday trade alert. Same setup, so skip step two, you have to have 100 shares of Apple. Skip step two, your first trade. Now here's one thing I have noticed, some people will wanna buy Apple before the trade alert comes out or, what, or spy or whatever. Uh, but remember, a big part of our strategy is to always have that insurance on, so that put option is really what protects you going into retirement. And so if we can pay for that by selling a call option, it essentially gives us a risk-free way uh, to limit our downside risk. Uh, but you can see same setup. We're selling a call option. I relate that to something like taking candy from a baby. It's easy to do. We all know buying call options rarely pays off. Usually the market's just kind of boring and does nothing. And then on the other side, uh, I'd say we're taking advantage of a very, very smart investor, Wall Street. They're the ones who have the, the billions of dollars to sit there and sell these put options. So imagine China strikes back. You know, you guys want to put sanctions on Huawei? We're going to put sanctions on Apple. Now, they probably won't do that because Apple actually employs around a million people in China. So they'd be really hurting themselves to do that. But let's just say they wanted to for whatever reason. China wants to escalate. They don't like Trump. They want Joe Biden or Kamala Harris to win. Who knows? All of a sudden, they put sanctions on Apple, kick them out of China. Apple craters $20, $30 overnight. It doesn't matter because we always own a put, we get to sell our shares to the big bank for 195, no matter what. And to have that right, we took candy from the baby by selling the call option. So at the end of the day, we're just trying to pick very safe investments for underlying asset, have a very smart diversification. We got half in stocks, half in bonds, 10% in the anti-inflationary investments. And again, this is predicting inflation will come because we're gonna to go to 0% rates. We're gonna start printing more money to buy debt with less pressure in the bond market. Where's all that extra capital gonna go? It's gonna go into speculative investments like stocks. And it's gonna go into things like gold, Bitcoin. So that, that's, the, that's the, the big macro view right now. And there's really no getting out of it unless the government wants to significantly cut its budget, which I don't think will happen by any stretch. Uh, the Fed's really got to step in and help us fund these debts. So they do that by printing money and most likely going to be buying around $100 billion of bonds a month. So we'll see. Now, if, if that outlook changes, of course, we're going to reduce the allocation to these anti-inflationary investments. Uh, but, but right now we're, we're still on that early, you know, we're not at the end of the game where they're going to have to raise rates. There's no inflation yet. 
Uh, so my thought is they're going to push that yield slowly down, support the bond market, and that will be very bullish for stocks, gold, uh, and the TLT. So let's take a look at this trade. You can see we have a maximum risk. This was a pretty bullish bet. So I'm betting that uh, this is a more risky trade than we usually do. Usually the caller will be a little tighter, uh, which means we get a bigger income from selling the call and we can buy a put option that's a little closer so we can have uh, a smaller reward and a smaller risk. But if you go look at when the Fed has spoke over 2019, uh, each speaking date has been responsible for most of the gains in the S&P 500 this year. So it's become a somewhat predictable event where it's worth taking a little extra risk. Now, you can notice I'm still buying a put option. So I'm not going to ever, ever put our followers in a position where they have unlimited risk. So in this trade, we have a risk of $1,232 and a maximum profit of 768. Now we're doing a little extra in this portfolio to really spice up the return. And here's this trade. So SLV is not the same ETF that we have in our buy and hold. So the buy and hold has SIL. Again, that's the mining companies. Now my prediction is that this is a problem they're gonna to try to uh, cover up for as long as possible. You know, what we need to do is cut government spending, uh, get a smart fiscal plan, and raise rates up to get rid of all the malinvestment in the world. And what would that do? That would crash the bond market, the stock market. We would quickly go into a, a depression. Gold would crash. Uh, everybody would just rush to, to get out of everything and just hold plain dollars, most likely. But nobody wants to do that. The political system's not designed to, uh, to take the pain today so that we can be in a good situation tomorrow. Everything's so short term. We have these four-year elections. Nobody wants to solve the problem. They want to push, kick the can down the line. So my expectation is we have a period of lowering rates and printing a tremendous amount of capital. And so this is a trade on silver. Now this is spot silver SLV. This is called a bull call spread. And what you'll notice is I'm taking a little bit of our profit from, uh, from the Apple trade, from the call option we've sold. So this I'm considering, as long as we win on the Apple trade, becomes a risk-free way to try to spicing up our profit. So, in this example, most of our trades are always one to one to one, so it's very easy to follow. But because this uh, SLV is a, such a cheap strike, this one's 10 to one. So for every 100 shares of Apple, we're doing one caller trade, which is this one. Okay, and so we walked away with a credit of 80 bucks. This trade, we we're paying 12 cents. This is a bull call spread. Let's take a look at the risk reward on this. So we're risking $120 to potentially return a profit of 380. And again, we're trying to finance this from taking money from the baby, taking candy from the baby by selling the call option. So we're taking a little bit of that potential profit and we're investing it into this trade. So we need uh, by next, Tuesday for SLV to climb to 16 to realize this profit. Now, if it doesn't, if it just goes up a little bit, we do make some profit. You can see this, uh, this risk curve to see where our maximum loss and our potential return is based on where SLV travels to. Okay, so Tuesday we are doing a little more advanced trade. We're doing a two-part trade. The SPY program is just really simple. It won't really get more complex than that. Uh, Tuesday does a little more action, but it's still a very, very similar setup. Now let's take a look at our TLT trade. And in fact, this is actually today's trade alert. 
So you can see, once again, we bought the safest asset, the TLT, sold a call option, a lot like taking candy from a baby, and then we bought a put option from Wall Street. So Wall Street's willing to buy up TLT, they don't care. Uh, they're happy to collect that high win rate income from selling puts all day long. And from our perspective, it's a good deal. We're financing the put from our call, we're giving up some of the upside, but we're severely limiting how much we can lose. So in this trade, we can make $83, uh, but we're risking 167. Now, Thursday trades a lot like the Tuesday trade, except we're doing the same idea on GLD. So this is a bull call spread on GLD. Now this trade's pretty nice. Uh, all we need is for GLD to go up at all just a few pennies from the price point where we jumped into the trade and we double our money now again we're taking some of the profit from selling the call option on the TLT and we're reinvesting it into this trade so this will be a very long-term setup uh, I think we'll be doing this most likely for the next one to three years very repetitive very predictable we're not going to win 100% of the time. Uh, that's why we don't get these crazy 50 to 100% returns. Uh, but when you look at the big picture, when you look at how we have our portfolio balance, it's very, very hard to, uh, to have a losing month. So let's, let's take a look at our track record just one more time, and then we'll go into some Q&A. So this is our SPY portfolio. Every update we send out, you have a link to this. And you actually get your own spreadsheet. So not everybody likes spreadsheets, but if you do, uh, this is a nice way to set yourself up so you can see what's going on. So we have uh, what I call the palette right here. These are the potential stocks we're going to trade. And 99% of the time, it's just a spy. We have all the stock entries where we're buying or selling in this purple area. This calculator automatically picks up how many shares you own. Up top, we have this little clever setup to allocate our capital. And currently it's 95% SPY, 5% cash. Over here, we can enter our deposits. That's gonna help you automatically calculate how many shares you need. Now again, you can do this kind of math in your head. You know, it's 30 grand for 100 shares of SPY. I'm sure you can figure out how many multiples of 100 you can afford. If we go right here, we have our option writing. So we can keep track of what's open, what price did we pay for it, or rather did we collect. Here's where we close out the call options that we've sold. If we scroll over here, this is our long options. Typically, that'll be our put options. That's the downside insurance. These usually return a loss, okay? So, and that's what we want. We would love to lose on the put and profit on the spy. And then over here is where we close them out. So it's very easy to organize your information. And you can see there's all our spy uh, insurance returning nothing. That's fine, it's completely fine. Here's the precious metal uh, and cryptocurrency portfolio. I don't like to talk about its return because its job is not to make us rich. Its job is to provide an extra edge to the portfolio and help us get a few extra percent on our total return. So I'll never spend a lot of time bragging about this or recommending that people get too heavily invested. Now, could I potentially see us going from a 10% position to a higher? Sure. If I see the Fed really hinting at what I think on Tuesday, we might slowly, gradually increase our allocation to this portfolio. But once again, it's really neat because you can punch in. And I also, what I do is I'll go punch in different amounts of capital and screenshot this, and that's what you'll see on the Monday, Tuesday evening update. So I know most of you don't wanna use a spreadsheet, that's perfectly fine. I print it out so you can say, all right, I need to get 10 grand into precious metals. Here's how to break it up. 
And also, if you don't want to do crypto, that's fine. These three do the job. It does the purpose. It protects your capital. This is the SPY alternative trade. It's outperforming, but just realize there's no free lunch. This portfolio has had bigger periods of drawdown compared to the SPY. So we'll go back to May, go back to December. You know, we're not completely protected. We lose much less than everyone else on the downside. And so this one typically will lose about twice as much as the SPY in a down move, but on an up move, it typically outperforms it twice as much. And then we have our TLT trade. Now, the most recent template I built actually uh, made a quick little change. We put Amazon and Google into this yellow spot, and I filled up this with some more aggressive bond products. So uh, I'll be updating my template to match what you guys have, but in the future, you'll see every update will have a link to your spreadsheet as well as a tutorial to use the spreadsheet. And again, I, I don't want you to think you have to have a spreadsheet. I'd say about half our members like to use spreadsheets and the other half do not. So it's completely up to you. Uh, and that's really a wrap. So there's no magic sauce. This is a very simple, repetitive, uh, easy to follow program. And at this point, what I'd like to do is uh, unmute it and see who would like to ask questions. So I'm, we got quite a few people in here. I'm unmuting everybody as fast as I can find your button. And we do have some specials in July. Uh, so you can give Dean a call. Also everybody, you know, you're assigned to a certain coach, either Chris or Dean when you first join our program. So they'll also reach out to you uh, to see what makes the most sense for you. Uh, but for now, I just have that phone number up there. What questions does everybody have out there? Uh, Richard says, do you run dividend risk with selling the call options? <clears throat> well, yeah, I mean, typically we don't get assigned very often. So we'll own the equity during that dividend payout period and, and also uh, get some dividends. So that's, that's a bonus. I don't even put the dividends in our profit. So that's like a little extra. Uh, but just to put things in perspective, typically the return we're making on the covered calls is much greater than the dividends. Uh, but that's a great point. And of course, we want to pick up dividends whenever we can. Uh, Ernest made it. How's it going, Ernest? I, I think it looks like everybody's got their uh, microphone muted. But if you do want to talk, I've, I've unmuted everyone. Chris, you got anything uh, you'd like to tell everybody? Uh, not really. I think that the uh, webinar here was very extensive and explained the program very well. And, you know, I just, like I say, you know, when I wonder whether I should invest in things, I sort of look for the upside and then I wonder why I wouldn't. And with this program, it's so stable, I don't really see any reason why anybody wouldn't do it. Um, I mean, you're not going to get super rich, but you're going to have consistent gains. And that makes you feel very good when you go to bed at night. <laughs> yeah. I got a question from John. Thanks for all the questions, John. And, and everybody listening, please don't feel like there's a dumb question. Uh, the more questions, the better. It, it helps everyone out there listening. He says, is there an advantage to just roll the options instead of individually closing out each leg? Yeah, so we're not trying to penny pinch and time the market. What I want is for you to have a consistent, safe return that's predictable and passive. And it, it's passive in that you know you have five minutes of work at noon on a certain day, and that's it. There's nothing else you're going to do. And I also like to call these... Uh, if you've if you've ever seen those old Mission Impossible movies, you know this uh, this 
message will self-destruct. Our trade alerts self-destruct at each trading period. So uh, a big problem I've seen is that a lot of products you may follow, you jump into their advisory service and they already have built this pretty complex portfolio and they've paid various prices over the past and they're sitting waiting for it to pay off. So what are you supposed to do when you first join? It's a complete mess. You don't know what to follow, what not to follow, what's a good price now, what's not, you know, hold, buy, sell, what on earth's going on? None of that with our program. Every trade we completely enter and we completely exit. So that means as long as you follow the trade alert correctly and you show up at the right time, you're going to get the exact same result that we're getting. So we're trading the most liquid products in the world that are backed by the most safety, the U.S. Uh, tax receipts for the, the bond market, and then the profits of the top 504 corp corporations in America for the SPY. You know, Apple sitting on a trillion dollars. I mean, they got more money than many countries do. So that's the real big idea. If you pull from this is that we want to pick safe long-term investments to, to hold our underlying assets. We want to sell options, call options, because most of the time they lose money for the person buying them. So it helps finance, uh, one, profits during periods of flat moves. And then two, uh, it helps us pay for put options so we don't have to pay for the insurance. So we get free insurance on the underlying asset. We own the best assets by far. Uh, and then we're taking free money out of the option market to ensure we have some return when the market goes flat. Now, the market goes up, that's great. Everybody's, everybody's having fun. But what about when the market goes flat or down? You got to think about that. Are you going to do well in a flat or down move? And, oh, I do want to show everybody one more thing. It seems almost inconceivable that the market might go down. You know, we've had this 10 year bull market, um, but I'm sure most of you have lived through probably two, three, four stock market crashes, financial freakouts. How can we do the same concept in a long term bear market? Well, let's just show you how easy that is. So this is a very handy tool. We can say, all right, well, let's buy 100 shares. So if you did nothing but this, you, you pretty much get the idea of the whole program right here, okay? Oh, wait, one sec. There you go. Okay, so this is the, this is the secret sauce. If there's any secret sauce to this, it's just understanding if you sell a call option, buy a put option, you're putting yourself in a very good situation where you have limited risk. You're going to make money in a flat market or slightly up market. And if the market flies higher, you're fine. You're just fine. Okay. But what if the market is trajected to go down for the next 10 years? That's what Ray Dalio is really predicting. If you really follow what he you know, and he's got so much content he's putting out. It's, it's really amazing. Um, he says we're coming to the end of a 40-year debt cycle, and we're going to have to work off this debt. We're going to have to raise interest rates. We're going to have to get all the malinvestment out of the market. We're going to have to lower the deficit of the U.S. government. It's going to be a painful period of time when it happens. And sure, the Fed wants to kick the can down the line. The administration wants to do that. The people want to do that, too. What's going to stop them? Well, they're going to print so much money that we do get inflation. They're going to have to raise the rates. And that's probably when this cycle is going to come to an end. So how do we profit from that in the same setup? I'm going to show you how easy it is. So you can see I chose the call option above the trading price, the put option below. 
all I did was put a dollar up, dollar below. That's the basic idea here. But let's see what happens if we do this. Let's put the strike below on the call and the put above. Now, what do you think is going to happen to this chart? Wow. Clearly, the market does not think that it's going to go down. When I had this flipped, we got a one-to-one -one profit, profit to loss. But if I try to bet down, boy, they're going to give me two-to-one. Much better deal. Now, the catch is market is not built to go down. It only goes down when everybody freaks out. Otherwise, it just kind of slowly drifts higher. And we've seen that for the last 100 years in America. You know, and people go to great extent to freak out about recessions and bear markets. But in the big picture, it's really leveraged to go up. So um, I got a quick question. Let's, let's answer this. After putting calls and puts automatically sell when it reaches your strength. Um, that's a good question. So... So when we buy a put, nothing's going to happen unless we exercise the put. Uh, so if you're the buyer of the option, you're the one with the rights to exercise that. So if I buy a put, I'm saying I can sell my shares to you for a certain price. Uh, on the other hand, if I buy a call, I'm saying I can buy your shares for a certain price. So on the short call, the, the call option we're selling, we're at the whim of the person who bought it exercising that right. And so just so you know, uh, I'll flip this graph up. Let's, let's go to what we're dealing with right now, but I just want you to see real quick. If all you do is push the call option below the trading price and the put option above, we enter a strategy where market could go higher. We're not gonna lose a lot. We'll lose 62 bucks. But if the market goes lower, we make 137. So we can do the same concept in a long-term downtrend and safely generate profits without taking on a lot of risk. Now you go try to buy a put option and predict the market's gonna go down and it jumps up, you're gonna lose 100% of your investment. Okay, so this is really the only safe, consistent way to generate a profit in a flat or down market. And it's just by doing this simple setup. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about option assignment with our current setup. So I'm going to push this back above and this right below. Okay, so <clears throat> a lot of people freak out. I'm writing options. Can something bad happen to me? So we're not writing put options. And that's really the single riskiest thing you could do, especially as a retail investor. A big bank might take a small amount of its capital and allocate it to writing put options because it's a, it's a very high win rate. The market's leveraged to always go flatter up. And so they can go sell these out of the money puts and pick up free money all day long. And they're only using a small chunk of their total portfolio to do that. Now you'll go find retail people who think it's a great idea and they're putting all of their capital to work to write put options. Okay, and we're not doing that, but if you do that, you might write a put option for the SPY at, let's just say, 295 and think you have no risk. You're not making a lot, but you think you have no risk. And then one day, China, US trade war escalates, Amazon has bad earnings, who knows what happens. All of a sudden, the SPY opens $10, $20 lower. Now you're forced to realize a huge loss. You're gonna wake up one morning, you're gonna own the SPY, and you're gonna have paid a lot more for it than it's worth. Okay, that's not the case with our program. If we sell a 301 call, like in this example, what could happen? Well, let's just say today we sold this call and all of a sudden the SPY traveled up to 303. Most likely the guy who bought the call option, in this case for, uh, let's see, $1.60, well, he's going to have realized an extra $2 profit because it went to 303, $2 higher than the strike. So he's going to say, hell yeah, I want to exercise my right. So what happens? Well, we get to keep his $1.60 and we're going to get paid $301 a share, which is fine. That's more than they're worth. So tomorrow we wake up in cash. 
we made a dollar sixty from selling the call option plus we made an extra dollar from the 301 strike price so in our program the worst thing that happens in terms of options assignment is you're gonna make the maximum profit and you're gonna wake up in cash so what do you do you buy back your shares on the next trading period wait till the trade alert so you know what strike to sell the call and to buy the put what we don't want to do uh, is buy the spy at all-time highs when we know we're in the middle of a cold war with China and there's negative debt around the world so things are not going up for really good reasons in America it's really everyone else has no other option we're the last strong place to put your capital but what happens when this global recession catches up with the US there could be a significant sell-off that tanks a lot of people's portfolios completely unexpectedly but if you own a put option your losses are controlled all right any other questions guys Hey Jason, what is the tool that you're using here um, to calculate the risk? In yeah, this is a really cool little company. Uh, they're tiny. Uh, it's called Trend. And uh, yeah, let me see if I can find their website for you guys. It's uh, very similar to what uh, uh, Thinkorswim has as well. Yeah, super basic stuff. Uh, so, so this is not some kind of advanced trading strategy. This is just, you know, why, why does trading need to be so crazy and wild and hard to follow and advanced? You know, if we could really just simplify our, our concept about how to invest, I think you'll find it's, it makes your life a lot easier um, and it really normalizes your returns. Any other questions, concerns? Well, another great webinar. I really appreciate everybody taking the time out of their day. I hope you found value in this presentation. We'll have another webinar next Thursday, and I hope you'll take the time to, uh, to make it to that one as well. Do remember when you do upgrade, you get moved out of this group, and you'll be with all our paid members so typically we get a little more uh, detailed in terms of you know what if this happens well what if what if the Fed doesn't do this or what if China uh, and US come to a trade agreement how would that affect the markets so we can talk about you know what potential outcomes we think might happen and how we would react and at the end of the day you know the trade alert tells you what to do so you don't have to to hurt your brain thinking about all that stuff but um, that's what our paid group tends to, uh, to like to do in those, those sessions. So I'll give everybody one last chance. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, we'll wrap this up. I'll get the replay sent to you so you have a copy of this. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay, Karen says she'll call one of the guys. She has a lot of questions. That's great. So Dean and Chris are very, very knowledgeable on everything we're doing, and they can really... Uh, help you help you get the extra mile in there so you can make it to the finish line. All right. Thanks, Richard. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate your time. Thanks, guys. Good webinar, bud.